This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Juma Bishwas. I'm the mentor of MRCUG Health. Today I will going to present a very important topic that is intraoperative cholestasis of pregnancy. That is a GTG guideline number 43 and this has recently been updated. Before starting of this topic, uh, I want to request you, please subscribe my channel and press the bell button so that you can get updated of all of my videos. Let's start with the topics. So, intraoperative cholestasis of the pregnancy is a multifactorial condition and it is characterized by pruritus in the absence of a primary skin condition with abnormal maternal bile acid concentration. Usually, the symptoms start in third trimester of the pregnancy, but it can also be occur in earlier of the pregnancy. In UK, it affects 0.7% of the pregnancy in multi-ethnic population, but in Asian, Indian Asian, or Pakistani Asian, the incidence is about quite high, like 1.2% to 1.5%. So this is a terminology of the pregnant woman with itching of normal skin. So gestational pruritus means that when there is an itching along with the peak bile acid concentration, less than 19 micromole per liter. So that is, we term it as a gestational pruritus. That is not obstetric cholestasis as because the upper limit of the normal bile acid concentration in the pregnancy is 18 micromole per liter. Mild intraoperative cholestasis, when you see the peak bile acid concentration is 19 to 39, moderate 40 to 99, severe when you see it's more than or equal to 100 micromole per liter. So 19 to 39 is mild, 40 to 99 is moderate, more than or equal to 100 is severe intraoperative cholestasis. So for the diagnosis of intraoperative cholestasis in pregnancy, there should be itching in the skin of normal appearances. And when you see that there's a right, rise peak uh, concentration of the total bile uh, acids is 19 micromole per liter or more, then we can term it as an intraoperative cholestasis. So for the diagnosis of interpretive cholestasis, if you suspect, you have to take a detailed history, you have to do the examination so that you can rule out other causes of itching in pregnancy. And also you need to do the liver function test to exclude any liver dysfunction. And if you see the woman have persistent itching and no other cause is apparent, in that case, you can offer repeat liver function test. Also, you can also do bile acid measurements. Uh, in the resolutions of the itching is associated with normalization of the bile acids and the liver function test during pregnancy. In that case, it's not uh, intraoperative cholestasis. So in case of a woman uh, who suspect of intraoperative cholestasis, in that case, uh, whether there's any role of other investigations or not. Usually, as in general, there's no recommendations to do other investigations. In antenatal period, you can only do if you see that there's an atypical clinical symptoms or there's a presence of relevant comorbidity or early onset of severe interpretive cholestasis in pregnancy. But in postnatal period, you can do the investigations just to make sure that all the abnormal liver function tests become normalized. So regarding referral to the hepatologist, if you see that the woman with severe, very early onset or atypical presentation, so it's better to discuss uh, these complex or unusual cases with the relevant specialist. For usual postnatal resolution, that should be within four weeks after birth. So uh, you have to repeat the liver function test along with the bile acids after four weeks of delivery. So what is the effect of intraoperative cholestasis in the pregnancy? So in case of maternal uh, effects, so there's a possibilities of sometimes this uh, in, uh, cholestasis can cause severe itching that may fluctuate and that can affect the sleep. And if the woman with intraoperative cholestasis, there's a higher chance of developing preeclampsia or gestational diabetes mellitus. So you have to measure uh, uh, blood sugar, and also you have to do the blood pressure measurement along with the urine monitoring. 
uh, as because there's a higher risk of diabetes and preeclampsia. Regarding the risk of stillbirth, so it only increases if the serum bile acid uh, also increases. So here you can see that the woman with 19 to 39, that is the mild form of intrahepatic cholestasis with no other risk factor, stillbirth risk is similar to the background risk the woman in case of moderate, like 40 to 99, with no other risk factor, in that case, stillbirth is similar to the background until 38 to 39 weeks of gestation. But any woman, when the peak bile acid is 100 micromole per liter or more, um, in that case, you have to tell them the risk of stillbirth is very, very high in comparison with the background risk. The woman with intrahepatic cholestasis, along with the other comorbidities or risk factors like gestational diabetes mellitus and or preeclampsia, or is a multifetal pregnancy, the risk of stillbirth is quite high. Even with the woman with twin pregnancy with intrahepatic cholestasis, the risk of stillbirth is higher if you compare with the, um, with the woman with twin without intrahepatic cholestasis. So here you can see the national UK stillbirth rate from 28 weeks. The prevalence of stillbirth is 0.29%. In case of mild interpretive cholestasis, that is 0.13%. Moderate, 0.28%. Severe, that is 3.44%. Other perinatal morbidity you can see in case of moderate or severe interpretive cholestasis, they have a higher chance of both spontaneous and iatrogenic preterm birth. And there is an also increased risk of meconium stain amniotic fluid during labor and birth. And this baby needs more admission in the neonatal care unit. So how should the woman to be monitored during pregnancy? That should be monitored in the consultant late care. And regarding the maternal monitoring, uh, we have to do the repeat liver function test and bile acid after one week then determine the frequency on the individual basis. Regarding fetal monitoring, we have to know or you have to ever, and you have to tell to the woman, then ultrasound and or the CTG do not predict or prevent the stillbirth in intrahepatic cholestasis. We can only tell them to monitor the fetal movement. And if any concern about the movement, they should come to the maternity unit for assessment. Regarding role of drug treatment, there is no treatment that can improve the pregnancy outcome. Um, also, there is no treatment that can improve maternal itching. But so, to elevate the skin symptoms, we can consider topical emollients such as aqueous cream with or without methanol. We can also consider antihistamine, that is chlorphenamine. Although the effectiveness of this treatment is uncertain in women with intrahepatic cholestasis. And usually we do not routinely offer arsodeoxycholic acid for the purpose of reducing adverse perinatal outcome in the women with intrahepatic cholestasis as because there's no evidence of significant benefits. Other agents we do not offer outside of the research study or the individual specialized treatment. Vitamin K only we offer them if there is any uh, features of reduction of absorption of the dietary fat like presence of steteria and or evidence of abnormal prothrombin time if coagulation studies are performed. Regarding the timing of birth, that also depends on the bile acid level. If you see it's a milder form of the uh, interpretive cholestasis, you can plan of birth at 42 weeks. In case of moderate, like 40 to 99 of the peak bile acid, you can consider birth at 38 to 39 weeks of gestation. In case of severe form, you can consider at 35 to 36 weeks of gestation. If the woman have other comorbidities like diabetes, preeclampsia, or multifetal pregnancy, then you have to uh, discuss with the woman and decide the time of the delivery according to the individual situation. Mode of delivery do not affect or do not uh, affect by the level of uh, in, uh, bile acids. So that should be follow the routine obstetric practice. 
monitoring of the labor in case of severe form that means if the peak bile acid is 100 micromole or more in that case there should be continuous electronic fetal monitoring uh, however uh, there is a very insufficient evidence for or against continuous electronic fetal monitoring if the peak bile acid level below 100 so that should be shared decision um, and that also based on the comorbidity and also based on the preferences. If any woman have any, any other risk factors like diabetes mellitus or preeclampsia or multifetal pregnancy, we should offer them to uh, go for a continuous electronic fetal monitoring. Analgesia should, uh, should be uh, the standard analgesia and anesthesia. Uh, we can offer them. There is no evidence of increased risk of PPH. So we can follow the routine clinical practice. Uh, regarding the postnatal period, we should follow up uh, 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 liver function test and bile acid. That should be four weeks after the birth because we can expect that the liver function test and bile acid should be normalized within this time. Regarding the contraception, uh, the woman with intrapatic cholestasis that doesn't influence the choice of contraception or hormone replacement therapy. So the woman with intrapatic cholestasis, uh, we can offer them any of the contraception. But if the woman with intrapatic cholestasis and the previous cholestasis secondary to the combined pill, in that case, we can offer them progesterone only or non-hormonal method. But the woman with previous uh, interpretive cholestasis requesting HRT. In that case, we can offering them uh, if there's no other contraindications of use. So, if only if it is secondary because of the oral contraceptive pill, they can take progesterone or non hormonal method. Otherwise, there's no contraindications in case of choice of um, contraceptions. So, in the future pregnancy, we have to tell them there's a higher risk of recurrence. So, we have to perform a baseline liver function test and biolysis concentration with booking blood investigations. And this is very nicely explained about the management of the pregnant woman with itching, very, very nicely explained. I think this is a very good thing of the updated guideline. So you can see that the woman with itching, you have to see whether the skin is normal or skin is abnormal. If the skin is abnormal, then it is not interpretive cholestasis. It might be other things. So we have to uh, do the investigations accordingly. But if you see the skin is normal or there's only scratch mark, then you have to check the bile acids and liver function test. If the bile acid is below 19, so that is not intrapatic cholestasis, that is gestational pruritus. You can uh, consider retesting if you see that there's a persistent itching. And gestational pruritus is safe in pregnancy. There's no effect on stillbirth, preterm birth, and that not impact on the birth timing. In case of bile acid concentration, 19 to 39, so that is the moderate, and more than or equal to 14, it's either severe or, it's, uh, uh, or moderate. So in that case, we have to take a structured history and examination. We have to uh, do the liver function test, but the liver, other additional investigations, we shouldn't routinely indicate it unless there's any kind of atypical feature. So in case of mild interpretive cholestasis, we can consider retesting if there's ongoing itching. Uh, there's no effect on the stillbirth, but 16% there's a chance of preterm birth, and we can consider delivery by 40 weeks. In case of moderate or severe, we can uh, review as clinically indicated with repeat bile acid uh, concentration to assess that trajectory. If we see the bile acid is in the moderate form, that is 40 to 91. Nine, in that case, the stillbirth risk is similar in the, uh, to the general population up to 38 to 39 weeks, 19% risk of preterm birth. So we have to consider delivery between 38 to 39 weeks of gestation. Any point, if you see the bile acid is more than equal to 100, so that is the severe interpretive cholestasis. So there is a high risk of stillbirth, 30% uh, risk of preterm birth. So we have to consider birth by 35 to 36 weeks of gestation. That is also very nicely explained about the pregnant woman care with itching and normal skin. So less than 19 is a pruritus gravidarum. 19 to 39 bile acid is mild. 40 to 99 is moderate. More than equal to uh, 100 is a severe interpretive cholestasis. 
So all cases we have to do a structure history and examination, no additional or alternative cause identified, then we have to follow like this. If we see that itching persistent, then we have to do the repeat vial acids every one to two weekly. In case of severe form, only if we see that it will impact uh, the care of plant. Risk of stillbirth compared with the general population is unchanged in pruritus gravidera. Mild uh, is also unchanged, like 0.13%. Uh, moderate unchanged until 39 weeks, that is 0.28%. And in case of severe, it's raised like 3.44%. Timing of mode of birth, there's no impact on the pruritus gravidera. Mild, you can consider birth by 40 weeks. Moderate, like 38 to 30 weeks, 39 weeks. And in case of severe, that is 35 to 36 weeks of gestation. Preterm birth rates, continuous and iatrogenic, that is unchanged in case of pruritus gravidera. Mild, it's 16%. Moderate, 19%. Severe, 30%. Role of routine use of arsodeoxycholic acid uh, in pruritus gravidera, there's no mild, moderate, and severe, there's no role, no impact on stillbirth. Additional liver investigation is not routinely indicated. You can consider for women with atypical features like early onset, marked uh, tronomitis, jaundice, fever, or in whom the postpartum resolution does not occur. So this is all about today's guideline. If you have any question, you can ask me on the group or you can write down on the comment box. I will more than happy to answer all of your queries. You can also give me a suggestions in which topic you want to know much more so that I can make a plan for the next video. Till then, stay safe. Thank you.